Hey everybody, my name is Scary Spikes and welcome to another Star Citizen video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Crusader Hercules A2. This is the assault variant of the Hercules lineup. Of course, I have done videos on the C2, the civilian version, and the M2, the military version. And if you'd like to see those, there will be links in the top right hand corner of the screen for you right now. As we do with every video, we need to start this one off by thanking one of our community members and VIP Gold contributors. And this week, that's going to be none other than Lord Bora. He's one of our newest community members as well as a fellow streamer and of course he's been incredibly uh, supportive and helpful and uh, he's also been a really fun uh, streamer to be around as well so make sure to go check him out and show him some love lord bora thank you so very much for being a friend and supporter of the channel and for being a vip gold contributor if you enjoy what you see here please make sure to let me know by leaving a like or subscribing if you're new and ringing that bell to never miss one of my future weekly uploads you can also join us live on stream Wednesdays and Fridays over on Twitch at 8 p.m. Eastern, and I hope to see you there as well as our amazing Discord community, the links for which can be found down below. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with this video. The Crusader Hercules A2 is definitely a very niche ship. It is arguably the bigger, better bulkier, beefier, deadlier, and definitely more expensive bigger brother. Wow, that's a mouthful of the Crusader Hercules M2, the military variant, and to a lesser extent, the C2 as well. There are definitely a lot of amazing changes in this ship, including the fact that yes, you can still haul cargo while you're hauling four Moabs or <laughs> mother of all bombs. And yes, just like you, I wish they were just a little bit bigger. Giggity. But that being said, there's a lot of things to love about this ship, and we're going to take a look from the outside in, as always, starting with an exterior tour, and then having a look at the interior, followed by how I would kit this thing out. So, stay tuned. On the outside, we can see that there are definitely a lot of similarities between the A2 and the M2. And again, less so the C2, although there are definitely still quite a lot of similarities there as well. From the VTOL thrusters to the number of main thrusters, Landing gear configuration, the fact that there is a turret on the top and the bottom of the rear, which still, just like the C2 and the M2, can be controlled by the person beside the pilot. And then, of course, also the chin turret, similar to the M2, where uh, you can have someone sitting behind the pilot, which can take control of that, which is really nice. The big changes of this, of course, are you have a much reduced cargo capacity, although still the ability to carry cargo in the amount of 216 SCU. You do have a little bit more armor. You have a ton more guns. I mean, this thing is literally a gunship if it's not a bomber. And it is most certainly still a bomber with those gigantic bombs on board. And from what I hear, you're going to be able to have up to 60 size 3 uh, bombs on board as well if you prefer not to go with the Moab. So if you prefer to go with a carpet bombing approach, that is definitely an option that will be available to you. Now, there's a total of seven turrets available here. And uh, the majority of them are size 5. There's some size 4 turrets as well. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail, but as you can see, there are a number of turrets down here. And some of them are in a single configuration, as we see there. And some of them are in a dual configuration, which we can see here. Again, once we get a little bit more in depth when we look at the interior, we're going to be able to see that there's an entire room dedicated to just controlling all of these turrets, which is honestly really, really cool. It makes me feel like I'm some kind of naval officer on some kind of big naval ship. So that's pretty awesome. As I mentioned before, we still have our nose turret here uh, that you can control from the seat behind the captain on the bridge, which is also really nice. And of course, the traditional front and rear openings here, which you can drive vehicles onto. Although I must add that it's definitely going to be a lot easier to drive vehicles from the front of the ship. As if you try to drive in from the rear of the ship, like if you have a Tonk, for example, you're going to have a really difficult time getting in through the rear. <laughs> Giggity because you have these big Moabs in the way. Now, as far as I know, there's no way to reconfigure these at the moment, but there might be down the line. So definitely something to keep an eye on. And yes, we can still walk through cargo, which I really wish they would fix. In any case, the outside of the ship is very, very similar. We have our two main ingress and egress points here by means of the front and the rear ramp. And of course, we still have our elevator, which can be found just over here on the port side of the ship which uh, all you need to do is to access that is just go ahead and hold F, get into the inner thought system, and the elevator will magically float down through the actual elevator door, which is supposed to act as an airlock, and uh, comes on down to pick you up. You can then simply decide which deck you would like to go to, and the elevator will take you either to the lower or the cargo deck, 
or the upper, or as I like to call it, the operations deck. So let's go ahead and close everything up. We'll have a take a look at the interior tour, which is not unlike some of the other ships in the lineup, like the M2 and the, uh, and the C2, as I've said before. But the really nice thing is they've kept a lot of the things the same. So if you owned any of those ships in the past, you'll notice that there are so many similarities that you should feel right at home in these ships. Now, the really nice thing, as with the uh, C2 and the M2 variants, is that you also have these light switches over here. So if it's a little too bright, you can go ahead and dim the lights just like that, which is really cool. I do also wish that we had a little bit of color control here. That would be really nice. I would prefer like a nice blue glow instead of a green, but hey, that's just uh, basically me picking at things at this point. And uh, then, of course, we can just kill the lights all together. And then we just have those auxiliary lights, which I think is really, really cool. It adds to the ambiance of the ship, and I really, really like that. I also like that we can see the light coming through the elevator shaft there, which is also really nice and gives you a clear indication of where to go. And even though the ladder isn't directly lit up, you can still see it from the uh, ambient light that's coming through the elevator shaft here. So you have a good idea as to where you need to go to access different areas of the ship. Now, one of the other big differences here on the A2, and I really love the little tiny little details. I'm not sure if you guys saw that little LCD screen changing color as we're changing our angle looking at the screen here, but that is absolutely amazing. And those little attention to detail things are what makes Star Citizen stand out for me. Let me know what makes it stand out for you down in the comments. But uh, we're going to go ahead and click this button to close it up. And it's fair to say that they have also redone all of these uh, switches on the Crusader uh, Hercules lineup. So it's really nice to see that. Again, one of those little quality of life fixes, um, or more so cosmetic than anything, but just really nice to see that. Now, of course, because we have these big Moabs in the way, I'll turn on my light here so you guys can see. This is basically stuck right into the wall, right? This is in, right in the wall of the uh, ship here and kind of sticking out. So unfortunately, there's going to be no way to keep the uh, button there to close and open the door. And so we have it here. Now, I'm not really 100% sure what all this stuff does here, although this looks like it could be for the lights. I'm not 100% sure. This is definitely the locked button here. So I, you can see as soon as I click on the lock button, it does lock the door, which is really quite nice. Although these, I'm not 100% sure what they do. Uh, and this is kind of funny. I actually have the Origin logo here. So maybe just like, you know, Samsung makes screens <laughs> for Apple devices, maybe Origin makes screens for uh, different types of spaceships out in the verse. So that's actually really interesting. I don't know if that's something that I've noticed before. I think this is actually the first time that I've seen that. So that's really cool. But I do think that maybe that is just a little bug uh, because of having brought those types of screens over from the 400i, which by the way, if you haven't seen, I've done a video on that as well. So we're not going to take the elevator, although you can take the elevator up. I feel like taking the ladder is just so much faster, even if the elevator is down, especially when the elevator is on the operations or the second deck though. I definitely feel like it's a lot faster just to take the ladder. <sighs> but again, this thing just opens so slowly and it, you know, it doesn't really open on the way up. I do like when you come close to it, though, it does open because it never used to open uh, when you were close to it. So that's pretty cool. Let's give it a try going down the ladder and coming back up because I think this is something they may have actually fixed. So it's currently closed. We're going to go up and see if it opens in time for us to go through. And unfortunately, it doesn't. So a little bit more work to go on the actual uh, little uh, latch there. But I do like how when you get close to the ladder that that latch now opens up because it never used to do that before. So little thing to notice there. But in any case, you'll notice that when we are on the main deck or the sorry, the uh, operations deck or the second deck of the ship here, it looks very, very similar. Everything from these storage uh, boxes over here, which also have their origin screens that you can touch to open them up. Uh, they all look very, very similar. There's not a whole lot of difference here. A lot of the differences between this ship are not as much cosmetic with the exception of, of course, the Moabs and uh, the extra guns. Um, but of course, also functionally, the fact that this is also not just a gunship, but a bomber as well. So having a look in here, these are all going to be pretty much the same. Uh, there might be some very, very slight differences, but not enough that I can actually realize. But we're going to go ahead and take a look at the port side of the ship here first. Then we have a little bit of storage here, which is really kind of cool. I think that's very similar to the M2 and the C2. One thing that is not similar, though is the turret room and feast your eyes on this. This is absolutely awesome. This kind of feels like you're on some kind of naval warship or maybe even a submarine. It just gives me that kind of vibe and I really, really like it. I think it's pretty awesome. 
So if we have a look here, we can see that there are a number of seats and these screens, yes, they're actually curved. If you can see that, well, they're not really curved. It looks like they're more like bent, but it's still really nice. I really love the edge lighting here with the red LEDs going all the way around. Uh, these just do a really good job at identifying the different individual stations. And I feel like the separation between them is just really nice and it just makes sense. Now, it looks like we have maybe some computers over here. It says uh, system access. So maybe these are individual computers um, that interface between these different pods as well as the uh, respective turrets that they're supposed to control. But it's just so cool. And you can get into uh, any of these, of course, if you have a full crew. It's just going to be that much more awesome. Uh, let me go ahead and sit down on one of these so you guys can see what it looks like. So as soon as you sit down, you have the screen coming down to greet you. We still have the camera bug when you sit down at a seat, your camera starts going off into distance. But we have some physicalized buttons here, uh, even though we still have sort of the text overlay. So I really wish that that's something that they kind of got rid of, although I know that there are some limitations as to how quickly they can do that. But I know they've started to do that very slowly. Uh, they're on sort of like a hybrid uh, version of that with the 400 eyes. So hopefully very, very soon, these will be fully physicalized buttons and uh, maybe these things will be better labeled and we won't have to have that kind of ugly text sitting over it. So you can go ahead and power on. And as you can see here, we have a number of, uh, of different options as we do with most MFDs, which is really cool. You have your weapons here and um, you can control a number of different things here. I'm kind of wondering if you're actually able to control stuff from here or if that's something that only the co-pilot can do. So let's go ahead and have a look. So we have our power here and let's see if we can move it here. Okay, so we it looks like we have the option to do it, but unfortunately it doesn't let us. And I mean, that makes sense. We are going to be just a gunner at this point. That is our role. And uh, this is just maybe displaying some information for us to see, which may be crucial. So we can see maybe, oh, the pilot has increased um, the uh, power to the weapon. So maybe now uh, we're getting into a situation where we're going to be ready to fight. And um, and that's that's going to be something nice to have there as well, even if you're just viewing that information. But in any case, you can go ahead and press enter remote turret. And I should make an entire separate video on this. But if you press Q, that's going to get rid of the relative mode or it's going to um, sorry, turn on relative mode. As you can see now, the turret is kind of just following my mouse. And some people really don't like this. In some cases, it's nice because you're able to lead the target. Of course, we're not able to fire because we're in an armistice zone. But if you press Q, this will then just follow your mouse wherever it is. And if you press B by default, you can actually change whether you are in uh, the gyro mode, which is interesting. So basically that way you can choose whether the turret is moving with the ship or whether the turret is going to stay looking at the direction where you point it despite the movements of the ship as long as you are within the operating range and angles of the actual turret. So that's pretty cool. Go ahead and hold Y here to get out of the station. And uh, we'll move on and take a tour uh, over the uh, rest of the uh, the operations deck up here. Now, we have the armory, uh, and this is really cool. I think this is something that they've added. I don't remember seeing this on my M2, but do correct me if I'm wrong. But we have our typical armory here, and there is just a plethora. There is a cornucopia of storage here available, not just for your weapons, but of course for your suits as well. It's, uh, it's safe to say that, unfortunately, this uh, is not something that is working at the moment, but hopefully something that we can look forward to in the future when we have uh, sort of an, an iteration or an iterative improvement in the physicalized inventory system, uh, which I will definitely make uh, a video about, and uh, that will no doubt be a part of my favorite features of 3.15 video, which I'll be releasing around the same time that 3.15 hits the live servers. But this is really nice to know. It's nice to see that we have these available as well to just store our suits for when that feature becomes a thing. And of course, if you are a pure evil, you can just imprison all your crewmates on here. Um, I don't know if there's actually a way for them to get out. I don't see any buttons in here, but that could be interesting. Um, and I'm not going to try it because, of course, we want to continue this video, but I'm sure there's going to be a way. In fact, I'm sure there's a button on the other side of this. So there's got to be a fail safe. But in any case, I digress. We have a really big armory here. And if you're wondering, like, what's the difference between these? So in the, uh, in the usual sort of... Uh, style of most armories, you do have these top racks which can accommodate your pistols. Uh, and looks like we have three over there. Yep, so that's three. And then we have looks like uh, two regular weapon racks here uh, for each of the uh, little cubbies. And these will be able to accommodate your regular shotgun, your regular um, maybe a sniper rifle, maybe a, a submachine gun, or just a regular assault rifle, and so on. 
Now, I'm not 100% sure if there's anything that you can put down here. It seems like there's some indentations for that, but I'm wondering if that's maybe just to help accommodate weapons that are a little bit longer, maybe have more attachments on them. So that could be interesting. These, on the other hand, though, are for much, much larger weapons. We're talking Artemis missile launcher and the railgun and so on. So this is where you're going to be able to store those larger weapons. And each of these can only store one, just so you know. But you've got plenty of space there. We've got a bench over here to sit on as well. This seems to be uh, for two people, although it looks like a unibody bench, which is quite cool. We have another two large storage uh, cubbies here for uh, big weapons. And then we have another set of four cubbies over here, just like we saw on the other side. So lots of space for weapons uh, for all of your teammates and yourself. And uh, looking at the back or the rear of the ship here, still on the port side, there's not really a whole lot to see. This is very similar looking to the rear of the M2 and the C2. And if we look over here, we still, uh, we still see the huge bright light coming from what looks like the endless super nuclear reactor in the back of this thing. Although I'm sure in 2951, they probably have better than nuclear. They probably have something else that is much more efficient and hopefully a lot safer. But this is all looking the same here. We have looks like what two of our of our main generators uh, powering thrusters right there. And if we look on the uh, starboard side of the ship here, we can see that we have habitation, but it is a little bit different. Now, I wanted to bring something up here and I'm not 100% sure which this is, but it's just so cool that you have these options here uh, for the different um, lighting inside of the bed. So you can turn on your lights, you can turn them off, you can put them on like standby and stuff. But the problem is that when you do this, it also does it for everybody else too. So I find that's kind of weird. I don't know if that's a bug. I think if you are going to be putting individual light switches in each of the beds here, you should be able to allow everybody to have their own individual amount of light. And what would be really cool down maybe in the future or a future patch or future, future iteration of the ship is if we can maybe have some kind of privacy control here, maybe some kind of glass or something to come down or even better, maybe just like a curtain, just keep it nice and simple, but just allow a little bit of privacy because this is definitely a very open concept. And uh, especially with the lighting, it's just kind of weird, you know, uh, so I think that would be definitely a nice addition. But in any case, we have uh, four beds on either side here for a total of eight beds. We have two lavatories here as well. I'll click and open that up. And these work exactly the same way as they do in the M2 and the C2. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but these are uh, definitely sort of combo restrooms and uh, they're pretty, pretty small as well. Uh, so not much more to see here in habitation. Uh, we of course have the storage and what's really nice is literally on all of the storage, anything where there's a door, um, they have improved uh, the uh, interface basically for opening the doors and locking them and so on. And you can now um, basically control them individual here. It looks like we also have, this might be the sensors actually, now that I think about it, they could be uh, for the sensors. So that's definitely interesting to see there. Uh, just a really nice touch to add as well. So this is the kitchen. Now this is one of the big differences between the M2 and the C2 is that we do have a dedicated kitchen and so-called mess hall. Uh, I really wish that there was actually a light switch over here to control uh, the brightness of this as it is a bit bright for my eyes but then again i'm a little sensitive to light and we have seating here for four people which is quite nice so uh, you can have half the crew chowing down eating enjoying a drink and just kind of relaxing and socializing all at once and uh, it looks like we have quite a lot of space here which is really quite nice so we're going to make our way over to the bridge and have a look at what uh what it looks like there should be very similar to what we see on the m2 i don't imagine that there's going to be too much difference and there's not going to be too much difference as well. Just moving towards the bridge here as we, ha we have this sort of bridge hallway. And uh, we have some components in the walls here as we do in the M2. Uh, and also very similar in the C2. The C2 does also have some similar component housings here in the walls. We have our shield generator there. A number of other things. And I just really like that they're kind of here. They're accessible. Uh, and these are really big shield generators, by the way. These are size 3, so they're quite large. But I like how everything is just super accessible. It's in an easy to get to place. It's not just kind of jammed down into a cramped, tight, sort of, you know, um, hard to reach engineering place. It's just kind of all accessible in a place where a lot of people pass through, which definitely makes sense. That definitely makes it easier to maintain your ship. You know, if and when that, that feature comes up. Now, these are going to be your escape pods. They don't look particularly comfortable, but I'm assuming these are going to be just placeholders. And we do, of course, have eight of these as we have eight bunks in the habitation, which is going to allow everybody on the crew 
to make a safe escape again when that feature becomes available, which I'm sure will be soon, TM as always. And uh, it's just nice to be able to know that again, these are in a, a fairly central area of the ship. They are a bit more forward, but that does make sense because you will have three uh, of your crew right up front here. And then of course you'll have uh, a number of crew in the back as well in the seats where we have all of our turret controls. So this shouldn't look very different. Now, again, I can't not have the same criticism as I had for the M2 and the C2, and that is, this just seems really wasted. You know, this this seems like it could have been an engineering panel that somebody could use to help control shields or power or even just a communications officer or something like that. Like, there's just a ton of space back here, and I'm hoping that, you know, the, the display tech for the new control panels on the doors uh, were the only thing that they borrowed from Origin and not also the idea of, hey, let's just waste a bunch of space in the cockpit. Now, again, this is alpha. Everything is subject to change. But again, it, I just it's a, it's a personal gripe of mine. And I just wish that, you know, if they if they went ahead and put something like this in here, it, it's a bit of a tease not to put in the systems to help make it work. So hopefully that's something that's going to work. This is the uh, second officers or the gunners uh, seat. You can have control over the chin turret with this, which is a dual size five, which is really quite nice. And then, of course, we have the very, very familiar looking cockpit. Not too much is different here. We have this beautiful LED light going all the way around. And we still have these like ridiculous long traveling seats, uh, both for the pilot and the co-pilot. I think it's kind of cool, but again, it just feels like wasted space. Definitely feels like these could have been like maybe half the distance or they could turn around and then whisk you into the uh, front of the control panel there as with some ships. But in any case, I digress here. So we do have the central components here, the uh, rather the central control panel. And a lot of these buttons are physicalized, as you can see. So this is very similar to what we saw first on the MSR when that first came out. And that's really cool. Again, I can't wait until they get rid of all of the uh, text over the buttons. I just wish that they had something that just told you what it was right on the button itself, like they kind of do here. They have some labels, right? So that would be really nice. But in any case, you have your co-pilot seat here. The co-pilot can help you to manage your systems, but they can also help to uh, get into one of the two rear turrets of the ship. And what's really cool is they can actually fire both of them at the same time, regardless of which turret they're in, as long as both turrets have eyes or have visibility to the target, which is really, really, really cool. Now, if we sit down, we're going to go ahead and just have a quick look on the inside of the cockpit here and show you around. Again, I'm going to keep this brief because... For those of you who have seen my C2 video or my M2 video, this is pretty much exactly the same. So we have two MFDs over to the left. Looks like we have one that's a little bit larger, one that's a little bit smaller. Uh, we also have one that's in front of us. So that makes three MFDs. And then we have um, the radar here in the middle. And we have another MFD on the right hand side. And the, uh, the co-pilot's got an MFD over there right here in the middle and then also here as well. So not quite as many, but definitely all, all the information that you would probably ever, ever need. So we're gonna go ahead and take off. And as you've seen, we do also have some cargo on board with those 216 SCU. We're gonna go ahead and take that back to the station. I'll see you there. And once we offload the goods, we're gonna talk about how to outfit this thing. And hopefully that is going to change sometime in the future. And once we start seeing changes to the weapons and shields and stuff, or at least significant changes, I will try to update all the videos uh, with newer uh, Urkel.games links. But in the interim, you can see all the Urkel.games uh, links down below. There will be a link for the default loadout of the ship as well as my recommendations. So let's go ahead and power up the engines and get going. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the vehicle loadout manager. Now, it's uh, important to say here that I'm, unfortunately, I don't own all of the components that I'm going to recommend. Just because this is PTU and we're just off a fresh patch that dropped today, literally mid-video. So unfortunately, I, I don't have the components that I had planned to have um, as I did before the patch, essentially. So bear with me here. I'll kind of go over everything with you. You can also check out the Urkel links down below if you want a little bit more information. I did have to dig a little deeper and believe it or not, no JS series this time around. I know it's crazy. So let's go ahead and get started. The very first thing that you can see here, these are going to be our bomb bays. And unfortunately, there's not much that we can change here. Actually, there's, there's nothing we can change here right now. So hopefully this is something that we'll be able to have changed in the future. As I mentioned, uh, from what I've heard, at least 
there are definitely plans to keep the Moabs, but then of course also to give you uh, a great number of smaller sized bombs as well. So you can, you know, drop the big boys or you can go carpet bombing. At least you'll have that option, which is really nice. At the moment, unfortunately though, there's no choice. So let's go ahead and move on to our systems. So for systems, again, I don't have any of these to show you with the exception of maybe one, just because we had a patch that dropped here uh, just mid video today during filming. But I'm going to go ahead and explain everything to you. And of course, if you want to see more detail, as always, go and check out the article links. They'll be in the description. I'll do my best to update them as needed. So with the coolers, uh, there's definitely a few options. We have the blizzards and uh, then we also have a different one here. So uh, I actually went with the chill max. Uh, so the blizzards are definitely cheaper. Um, but the chill maxes, they have a, a lower draw request time actually for, for the power and uh, they actually do better cooling. So it's just really quite nice. Um, they are definitely a bit more expensive though. The blizzards are quite cheaper. Uh, so if you want sort of a, a more affordable option, you can go with the blizzards, which still have a very good cooling rate. Uh, and you can stick with those until you're able to upgrade and then upgrade to the chill maxes. Uh, but uh, yeah, the chill maxes, uh, that's what I would go with here for both coolers. Now with power plants, <laughs> I know this is insane. No more JS series, and there's a reason for that. We have a, a few options available. One of them is actually here, which is the Durango. Um, that is the industrial one, but that is not the one that I went with. I went with the Quadracell. Now, I, I think the Durango might actually be cheaper, but the Quadracells, uh, they're much, much more effective. Like they have uh, a lower request time, uh, or they, they're able to function faster and more efficiently, but also they provide just a lot more power overall than the Durangos. Again, the Durangos are nice. Um, they're, they're definitely much better than most of the other offerings um, that you can see when you go over to a place like Omega Pro, for example, over at New Babbage. But uh, I would definitely recommend going with the Durango if you were going to want to save a little bit of money. If you want the maximum performance for your buck, though, uh, and don't mind paying a little bit more, definitely the Quadracells is where I would go with that. Now, the Quantum Drive, this one's going to be pretty easy. Honestly, uh, with something this size, you're not really going to be, you know... Um, <laughs> necessarily doing light bounty hunting you know you have the option to of course as always uh with with all of the turrets and stuff that you have on board but that's not likely what you're going to be using this ship for at least maybe the majority of folks you're going to be going on bombing runs you're going to be doing um you know escorts with uh, with other military personnel to help um you know a number of different uh, folks in your org for example um get through difficult or dangerous areas and uh, you're going to be using the gunship capabilities of all the turrets on here, as well as the transportation capabilities and the uh, ground bombing capabilities. This is definitely a very niche ship. So I imagine that you're probably going to be traveling longer distances more than you'll be traveling shorter distances. And for that reason, I would recommend the TS2. Uh, it's honestly probably the best quantum drive that you're going to be able to get for this size. Uh, that is a size 3 quantum drive as well, so quite large, basically a sub-capital, but the TS2 is I would go uh, what I would go for, and unfortunately I don't have that here, I apologize again, but uh, you'll see it in the links when you click in there. Uh, we do have uh, sort of a basic one here that's, uh, that's not very good, I would recommend changing this as soon as possible. It is military uh, grade, which is our military class, which is nice. Uh, but it's C grade and uh, and and the, under the grade here. We, this is actually kind of confusing because we have grade here and a grade here. Um, but I imagine that this number corresponds to uh, C, you know, third letter of the alphabet, number three. In any case, the higher the higher this number is, the worse um, the worse that it is the, in terms of quality. So you definitely want to upgrade to a TS2 here. Now for shield generators, uh, there was definitely some competition there. There was it was pretty close it was up uh between the parapets and the fr 86s now the parapets uh, they do have a little bit more and, and again i could be wrong here but this is just based on information that i'm going off of uh the uh, urkel.games website in the 3.15 ptu database that they have set up uh so again this might not be 100 accurate when you watch this video things may have changed uh so please uh you know uh, instead of putting in a mean comment why don't you go ahead and just Correct me and, and, and put a comment in with the appropriate value for the time. Uh, and that would be really appreciated by myself, but of course by the community as well. We want to keep things current. Of course, I'll do my best to update the links as I've said. But in any case, right now the competition is really between the FR86 and the parapet. And the, the differences are not really big. 
the, the parapet does edge the FR86 out just a little bit in terms of actual HP from what I can see on the website, which looks like there's a little bit of a change because they used to pretty much all have exactly the same HP. If you ever watched any of my 314 videos, you would have been able to see that. Um, but what I found with the FR86 is, is they do recharge a tad faster and they do have a uh, slightly faster draw request time for power, which just, I would say, makes them a little bit better. Um, they don't have that much less HP than the parapets. And honestly, size three shields are massive and we have three of them, or rather two of them anyway. So you're going to have plenty, plenty of shield pool and being able to squeeze out a little bit more regeneration, I think is uh, definitely nice to have. Uh, so that's what I would choose again. Uh, you know, you might choose something different and that is totally okay. So let's going to go, uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to the, um, the paints here, uh, which I don't imagine there's going to be too much. And uh, I don't have really anything except for my Cerberus paint here, which looks really cool. It looks kind of black at certain angles and it's uh, kind of bluish in other angles. So that's kind of cool. Although... You can unequip it and go with just a straight out blacked out look with a red accent, which also looks really, really nice for the A2 here by default. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the weapons. All right, so with the weapons, there's definitely a lot of things to change, and we're probably going to be changing just about everything here. Now, the uh, the attritions are here. I don't know why I have so many attritions. I think I may have just purchased them and somehow they survived the wipe. So that's interesting. Um, but that being said, uh, I, I definitely wouldn't recommend the attritions, even though they're very close in performance to their CF counterparts. That being the CF447 Rhino laser repeater and the C5, uh, CF557 uh, Galdrian laser repeater. So what I would do for any of these, and I'm not going to just click one by one because that's going to take forever, but we do have a number of weapons on the ship. We have a couple of size five weapons for the pilot. We have the size five uh, double turrets here. We have a chin turret. We have a couple of size five turrets on the rear here as well and under the ship. And we have a couple of size four turrets as well. And so for the size four turrets, I would replace uh, the, I believe it is the M6As. Uh, if I'm not mistaken here, let's just have a quick look. And it looks like, yeah, these are the uh, M6A. So I would re, uh, rearrange these and change them into the uh, CF447 Rhino laser repeaters. Uh, they just do a little bit more DPS and um, I, I just like them quite a bit more. I don't know about the range per se. I feel like, you know, that's something that they definitely have to still fix and balance. But the CFs always uh, worked out really well for me in 314. They've been doing quite well for me in uh, in 315 as well in the PTU. So I would definitely recommend going with those. They'll give you a bit more DPS. Um, you will have better fire rate and a little bit better uh, sort of on the ammo side of things, at least the temporary ammo. Uh, the M6As may have a little tiny bit more range, but honestly, I feel like these are just uh, just a lot better. Um, and so the same would be said for anything uh, that is bigger than that. So any of the size five stuff, I don't know if I actually have any of the size five stuff here. I don't think I do. It doesn't look like I do. Um, actually, we do have the M7As and then we have the Omni Skies and the Attrition 5s. The Attritions are okay too. If you happen to have them in stock, you know, you can throw them on. It's not a big deal. Um, they'll perform similarly to uh, to the CFs, but uh, I would prefer the CF557s for the size fives and the CF447s for the size fours. Thank you so very much for watching. I'm so glad you made it to the end of the video and I hope you enjoyed this one. It's definitely an interesting ship. That being said though, if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, please make sure to let me and YouTube know by leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new and you'd like to see more of this and of course ring the bell so that you never miss any of my future uploads as I upload videos weekly here on the channel. Of course, you can also join our amazing Twitch streams Wednesdays and Fridays over at Twitch at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and of course our awesome Discord community. The links for those will be down below, but do note that this week I am taking some time off of streaming uh, as I am going to be working on implementing all of the back end stuff, giggity, <laughs> to do with the organization. So we're building up SSPG again. If you'd like to join, we'd love to have you. Details can be found in the enlist section in our Discord, which again, the link for that is down below. Of course, you can also go check out the recent post that I made on YouTube, which will give you some more details and a link uh, to sign up. I'll include that link in the comment section here as well. So you can go ahead and click on that. And so it's convenient for you. But that being said, guys, thank you so, so very much. Uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate you being here. Hope to see you in the Discord and on the stream. And of course, in the next video.